Concept number one, appropriation. What is an appropriation? The legislative body makes a policy decision to spend a specific amount of money for a specific purpose. Now this is usually clear to the public body when you're dealing with a special or separate warrant article, but it's the same concept when it's embedded in a line item in your budget. Yeah, and you have these forms that DRA uses. I'm, I am assuming you're all generally aware of the fact that the whole tax rate setting process has been moved into an electronic database, which is maintained by DRA. Your finance administrator is 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 feeding mm -hmm. data, and and it from it's from that tax rate setting process. The forms and documents that are documenting how you do the process and the public hearings that's all fed to DRA. They actually will produce for you a, a warrant uh, from a standard language that they have, and then that will be used to then with the final ruling by the town meeting to help set the tax rate. Um, so an appropriation is authorization to spend money, not the actual spending itself, that we're going to raise and appropriate X dollars, uh, $100,000 to fix the fire ladder truck or to buy a new fire ladder truck, as the case may be. Um, uh, appropriations is to indicates to raise is to identify the source of the funds. So you're going to say, I'm going to raise and appropriate X dollars by general taxation, or I'm going to raise and appropriate 100000 from the capital reserve fund, or I'm going to spend it from a special revenue fund. Um, appropriate means I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to, part of the Warren article, I'm going to take $100,000 out of the public works capital improvement fund to build that intersection that was decided to be improved as part of a warrant article. The purpose uh, is the goal or the aim to be accomplished through the expenditure of funds. The $100,000 is going to go towards putting in that XL and D-cell lane for that particular uh, intersection that needs to be improved. Um, and and the, the, the concepts of these appropriations is not limited to just things set forth in the DRA forms. The DRA form is the one that it, uh, Hanson is probably using is the MS-636. The MS-737 is the form that the, the, the overall budget forms that DRA uses for schools is, uh, is 737, towns is 636. Uh, but then you can also have other appropriations that would not necessarily fall into one of those categories, such as uh, it was common in my town, and we'll get to this in a second, uh, that, that our town meeting would raise and appropriate a sum every year to help support the work of the visiting nurses in the town. And so that's, you'll never see an appropriation for visiting nurses on the DRA budget form, but it certainly would be an, an appropriate public purpose. Um, and that's what we're going to speak of right now, proper public purpose. All appropriations have to be for a proper public purpose. Um, and it's any purpose not prohibited by New Hampshire Constitution or by any other law. School districts have it limited to the support of public schools and village districts purposes for which the village district is um, created. So what is a proper public purpose? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same thing as public benefit. The general benefit of the public still might not count. There has to be some implied authority to appropriate it for that particular purpose. Now generally what we suggest is you keep in mind that um, as long as there's incidental private benefit, it doesn't necessarily mean that the proposed appropriation is illegal. So if I'm raising and appropriating $10,000 or $5,000 or even $500 to help support the work of the, cap of the uh, Visiting Nurse Association in the town of Hampton, I'm clearly going to help benefit individual clients, but it's certainly true that that's giving general public public benefit to the town as a whole. Because what it may do, it may support people in the community and help them avoid coming to you through local welfare assistance or other forms of assistance. And they'll keep them in their homes longer or maybe allow them to work longer. So there has to be a sufficient public benefit from a public uh, appropriation. But I think everyone would agree you're raising an appropriate money for a fire truck or to build a road, there's no doubt that's a public purpose. But certainly, you should not be spending money plowing private roads or driveways. And in fact, uh, there's a statute, and I believe it's RC 231 pulling 59, but it's close that says towns are authorized to spend money raised from taxation for class four and class five roads only. Right. And that's in cl making clear that you could have a class six road, still a town road, but you're not uh, authorized to spend public dollars on the maintenance of such a class six road. Okay.
So uh, with appropriations, how specific should the Warren article be? You know, I think generally the voters should be setting uh, broad policy outlines, but leave the governing body some <laughs> flexibility as to details. If you get too specific, and we've seen this in Warren articles before, to see if the town will raise and appropriate $50,000 <coughs> to buy the, uh, the 2010 Chevy Ford pickup truck, blue in color, which is sitting on the lot at the <laughs> Grapponi auto dealership, that is so specific that if it's not there, you may have a difficulty of complying with the duty to spend the money only for the approved purpose. <laughs> Um, and always, as we, we encourage you, you've got to, at some point in the Warren article state the, the actual amount, the specific amount that's appropriated for that purpose. And, and here's an area that happens all the time, and I'll mention it here. Oftentimes, uh, we'll get a Warren article after the fact um, that the Warren article said the see if the town will raise an appropriate $100,000 to buy a new backhoe uh, and, and to take uh, 50000 uh, and to... to, to uh, uh, take fifty thousand dollars out of the, the capital improvement fund uh, for that purpose, and to uh, raise the rest of the money by taxation. But then uh, they decide they find another backhoe that they can spend more money on, and it's a better deal, let's say. And so they think, okay, let's trade in the one we have, and we'll get trade-in value. The problem is now they're about to sell a piece of town equipment, because that's what a trade-in is, and they didn't appropriate the dollars from that sale. So it's an area one has to be really careful with. If you're going to, in any transaction, uh, in a Warren article, do a trade-in or sell a piece of town equipment, say that in the article. And to raise and appropriate a sum not to exceed $20,000 from the potential sale of the existing backhoe. Um, with appropriations, there are content-based requirements that have to be for a public purpose, um, and uh, you have to have a gross amount appropriated, but there's also procedural requirements. You have to have a public hearing on your budget. Without a public hearing on the budget, you, you would probably not have a budget, or unless you, you would use a, another statute where a town meeting can uh, correct the deficiencies in um, the adoption of a budget through a second town meeting that uh, corrects procedural deficiencies. You have to disclose all purposes and amounts of appropriation at the public hearing and certainly at the deliberative session. You have to have gross-based budgeting. You have to say the total amount that's raised and appropriated for an individual article or in the budget as a whole. You have to have recommendations. There are, there are certain requirements, certainly for a budget committee, if you have a separate special warrant article, such as a bond article, or to put money, um, uh, I'm trying to think of all the, the possible ones. Uh, put money into a capital reserve put, put fund. Put money into a capital reserve fund. Warrant a article. petitioned warrant article. These would be special, separate warrant articles where the budget committee is required to have a recommendation on it. But you also have warrant notice that when the warrant is posted, you explain to the voters through the posting of the warrant, this is what we're proposing for the adoption of our budget. Uh, and you have to list appropriations on the posted budget, but that's in the forms, which I think nowadays, because of the way the computerized system operates, that's going to happen one way or another. Um, the budget committee has to have its first hearing at least 25 days before a traditional town meeting or on or before it's the third Tuesday in January. Mm -hmm. So this is RSA chapter colon 13. Um, so 4013 specifies the timetable for actions by uh, budget committee in SB2 town. It has to be held by the official budget committee and has to be at least seven days notice before that public hearing uh, for it to be a valid public hearing. Mm -hmm. All purposes of appropriation must be discussed or disclosed at the public hearing. So if the budget committee receives a last minute request from the select board at the public hearing, as long as it's discussed and disclosed at that public hearing, that can be a legal appropriation. Um, uh, budget committee and the governing body cannot take, can take the suggestions or they can say, no, we're not going to take up that proposal. But you can get new purposes and additional amounts may be brought, at, brought up at the public hearing. After the close of the public hearing, no new purpose or amount can be added by the budget committee or the governing body without another hearing. Now, that theoretically could occur if you had enough time before your deliberative session to squeeze in another public hearing, and I've seen towns do it. Uh, at the last second, if you have enough time before your deliberative session, depending upon when your deliberative session is scheduled, because you've got that floating date, first Saturday in January, second, whatever it is, uh, you might be able to squeeze in a time for the seven-day notice for public, a public hearing. 
you can't have any increased amounts of no two subject new subject matter. So important to emphasize. Once the public hearing is closed and you're not holding another public hearing, you can't add increased amounts to the budget and you can't add new subject matter. It's fixed, set. Um, appropriations um, that you have uh, uh, for the budget also apply to petition warrant article. That is public hearings applied to petition warrant article. So if there's a petition warrant article to raise an appropriate public dollars, that has to have a public hearing. Um, you can have at least one hearing after the petition deadline. Schedule at least one hearing after the petition article deadline. So there's a petition article deadline in the statute, which I believe is in an SB2 town. It's the first mm -hmm. or second Monday in January. And so it's probably a good idea, and again, you can look at our calendars to try to schedule your public hearing, not necessarily the last day, but at least uh, with enough time so that you know that all the possible petition warrant articles have been received, mm -hmm. that you hold it after the deadline for the petition warrant article period has gone by. Um, and the, the budget committee uh, holds, finalizes the budget after the close of the public <laughs> hearing and at the public meeting. Um, in SB2 towns, uh, in uh, such, such as Hampton, if you received, if the town received a petition warrant article that raises money by bonded indebtedness of more than $100,000, mm -hmm. there's a different deadline for the petition to be submitted. And that requires that it be submitted no later than the Friday before the second Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Again, you're probably going to find it easier if you have a concern about meeting your deadlines. Just check our calendars. We're going to be spending a lot of long hours in July getting those ready, and we'll produce them and get them available on our website and mail to you during September. Um, the ultimate uh, hearing deadline for a budget is 14 days before the town meeting. However, um, for a, a town like uh, Hampton, there's a set time period for having the budget posted. So what in my town, when I did my budget, we actually had the school district moderator, excuse me, the superintendent would walk up to us when we concluded the school budget hearing and he would ask us to sign the budget for him. He wanted it signed because he was going to post it the day or two later. Same thing we do at the, at the select board. They would walk up, the finance director would walk up and say, like, put your signature on the budget for him. Uh, but in SB2 town, like Hampton, you have to post the budget on or before the last Monday in January. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, you know, the time frame. You've got to get things done and ready to be presented to the voters at the deliberative session. For appropriations and the posting of the warrant, it's traditionally 14 days before the meeting. It has to include all appropriations. If you don't have the appropriations listed in your budget or on a separate warrant article, uh, the DRA will invalidate any appropriations that are not appropriately listed. Again, this is where DRA will intervene and say, wait a minute, you missed a step. You didn't have a proper notice of that proposed appropriation which you think you now have adopted.